So a camera locking system uh, like this that automatically rotates your camera toward whatever you are focused on can be very complicated in a lot of ways, but it's actually not that difficult to make a very basic implementation of something like this. So today, let's go over something that lets you focus on a certain actor with your camera, but still allow you to look away from it. But then when you're done looking away from it, it automatically rotates back toward what the game wants you to focus on. So here in an entirely empty project, uh, once this project is finished, there will be a link down below in the description to the Patreon page and for YouTube members to download the finished project file to play around with. It's actually fairly simple though, so let's just get right into it. And the way that we're gonna do this is I'm gonna make a quick uh, actor here. That'll be a uh, target actor, just to have something to look at really. And we'll call this uh, just something like a cube. And that'll honestly be enough for now. So let's just put down a couple of these cubes in the world. So we can just put like a couple of them down like this. And that's honestly all that we need. And from there, let's go into our third person character, our blueprints. And there we go. We're going to do this in the tick event. So let's add a event tick real quick. And for that, what we need is we need to get actor location. And that's just going to reference itself for the starting position. So that's going to start at the player's location. And then we need to have a target location that we want to look at. For us right now, that's going to be an actor. Uh, you can also make this a vector that you can manually set or whatever. And what we're going to do is I'm going to make a variable right here for the target actor. And I will set that to a actor reference. So actor object reference. And they will kind of just do the same thing. We'll drag that in. Uh, we'll get the actor location this time from that target actor and set that to the target location. Now, we do need to populate this with something. Uh, I have an entire tutorial for a targeting system that you can use to populate this uh, in a slightly more complex way. Uh, what we're going to do for now is just on begin play, I will uh, get all actors of class and the class will be our uh, target actor class. So it'll just get all actors of that specific type, and I'm just going to get a random item from that array, and that's going to be our target actor. So it just picks every time that we play one of the random cubes in that level. This is a very just-to-show-off kind of setup. Obviously, this isn't what you would do in a real game. Uh, you would have an actual like targeting system, but that's, again, not really what we're doing here. Uh, so before we do any of this, we do want to check whether or not this is a valid actor, uh, just in case. If it is, we're going to do some other stuff. You might want to make this into its own separate function or its own separate event, uh, just for organizational purposes, of course. Uh, I'm just going to put it all here right away into tick. Generally speaking, categorize your different functionality into actual functions and don't just throw everything into tick or begin play or whatever. Now that we have this look at rotation, though, we can do some fun stuff. And that is we can do a rinterp2. And we're going to interp from our current rotation to this look at rotation. But not quite. Because we don't want to actually interp the x and the y most of the time. Usually you only want to interp the z. That is the rotation, uh, if we go into the camera boom. It's this rotation that we want to uh, enter, the rotation around the character. We don't really want to like interp the rotation for rolling. You also could do the Y rotation if you want, that is for pitching up and down. Uh, but generally speaking, what we want to do is we only want to change the Z rotation. And I'm just going to reset this back to 000, otherwise this is going to be a mess. Now, this camera boom that we have here in the third person template uses the control rotation. So instead of setting the rotation for the camera boom itself, what we're going to do is we're going to update the control rotation for our character. And then the camera boom is just going to follow that rotation. So let's just immediately do that. And for that, we need to get the controller and we can set the control rotation. And that's going to be the output from our interp2. And we'll hook that up to this is valid node because that's the only execution that we actually need to do. 
Now, we need to put in two different rotations to interp between. So what we're going to do here is for the target, we're going to make a rotator where we have the X and the Y. Again, you can do something with the uh, pitch if you want to. At the moment, I'm not going to. We're only going to do the yaw, the Z rotation. Um, X and Y we're going to leave alone. Uh, the final look at rotation we're going to use, we're going to break that rotator, and we're just going to take the Z out of that. So it's going to be 0, 0, and then whatever our final look at rotation is for the Z, for the yaw. Uh, the current rotation that we're going to be working with will be from the get controller. We will get the control rotation. So we're going to get the control rotation, say, hey, we want to move toward whatever this rotation is at a certain speed, and we need to put in the data time from event tick as well. And this is the speed at which we're going to uh, interp. So this is, I believe, the degrees per second. So let's set that to something like 40. The wonderful thing about this is because we're just updating with this interp, our uh, looking around from our camera input that this uh, project sets up for us uh, by default still will work. We can just look at the opposite direction if you want to. It's just the moment we stop looking around, it's going to start going back into uh, here again. And then for the X and the Y, we don't actually want those to be zero. We want to uh, keep those as whatever the control rotation itself has. So from get controller, get control rotation, we're also going to break that rotator. And that's just going to put in the X and the Y. And that just pretty much says, hey, keep the X and the Y because we're going to interp from the get control rotation to the get control rotation, which means that nothing actually physically changes between those. We're only going to be changing the Z value. Now, this 40 might be a little bit too much. Uh, let's just take a look. We can look up and down fairly easily, uh, but we can't really look side to side too much. But if we just walk around, I think it's this one. Yeah, if we just walk around this uh, little cube over here, you can see that the camera automatically uh, follows us along looking at that little cube. Now, again, 40, I think, is just a bit too much. Uh, so let's set this to something like... 10 maybe maybe that's a little bit better still a little aggressive honestly so maybe just one yeah one still seems uh pretty fast but at least we can scroll in against it so i can look the other way if we want to but the game is going to try to force me to look back to uh i think in this case it is it's one of these surely i think it's this one yeah there we go and it has a, a little bit of smoothing built into it right so if it is very far away, it starts rotating very quickly, and then it actually eases in a little bit as we get closer and closer. Which, again, you probably want to select all of this, right-click, and collapse it to a function, and this will be uh, rotate lock on or something like that, just for organizational purposes. And of course, there is a bunch of things that you can do to make this uh, a bit smoother and a little bit uh, less in your face, a lot more complicated. But this is a good basic foundation of how you can make a lock-on system like this. And a very big thank you to all my patrons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And of course, an extra massive thank you to my cave digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 